This is Prophet and literally. Yep, literally Hitler and Prophet Muhammad. Yes. Peace be upon him. Coming at you. Uh, not exactly live, but yeah, this is the extravaganza. Here we are. Oh, um, okay, so a lot of people on YouTube talk about both uh, Islamophobia and Islamophilia and Islam apologists and Islam. Um, the, the opposite of that and uh, what we got here is this guy I've watched I learned about him from some other youtubers um, but yeah. this one is particularly interesting because he's dealing with a woman who's apparently a former Muslim now this guy is named uh, Karim Jovian vlogs yeah and apparently he's pretty popular he's got a pretty big follow following at uh, 286,000 subscribers so yeah he's now, kind of a big deal on YouTube I guess now his arguments are when he, he gives some of the worst arguments in defense of Islam but he's so popular that it's like it has to be called out stupid you know if stupid catches on usually you let it die on its own but if it, it but when it really catches on, and a lot of people are like, hey, sounds logical to me. Sometimes if you argue with a fool, you are one, but it doesn't. sometimes you have to do it because you're letting stupid fly. Now, I've heard some Islam apologists give some pretty sound arguments about certain things. Uh, this this is, guy is no exception. This guy well, is, yeah, he... Let's God. just... He's he. What I like about this though is he's he's dealing with a alleged former Muslim, talking about the problems with Islam, and what I like about this is we get to do a commentator thing. We get to commentate. Sorry, I'm a little drunk. Uh, yeah, comment. We're, we're commentating. <clears throat> Fuck it. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. We're we're, we're a little buzzed off of some angria. Not that we're. Uh, We've never done a show sober. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, we're not exactly promoting Mangria, but yeah, for the record, uh, this is it's Adam, Adam Krola's drink, and uh, yeah, we, we for sure, we, we recommend it. Go yeah. out and get yourself a bottle. Yeah. It should be at your local uh, Total Wine and More. Right. And I'm or BevMo. Right, and I'm mixing it with Moonshine, so I'm really going to be interesting tonight. So, anyway, okay, so the thing is, the ex, normally, you see the ex-Muslim, and if I was really biased, I would have a video where... You would have a really smart ex-Muslim arguing with a stupid Muslim. In this case, they're both kind of stupid. Hmm. And you'll know what we mean because I'm going to start the video right now. And we're going to hear some stupid on both sides of the argument. And I'm going to, I'm going to, we're both going to deal with um, what they have to say. So here we go. If you follow sure. Muhammad as your ultimate role model, right, sure. you're, right, it works. you're a Muslim. What did Muhammad do? He was a rapist, a pedophile. A mass murderer. <laughs> he, um, you know, uh, and yeah, that those are all true. You know, like that can't be denied. But this guy will find a way to deny it. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is a biography written about uh, Muhammad. I forgot who his name is, but every Muslim knows what it is. It was written about a hundred years after he died. After he died, all Muslims in history have accepted that he killed people. In mass for not convert for not being a part of his religion, he did in fact have sex with a nine year old, and the excuse made is well, it was acceptable then, fine, but he was still a pedophile.
Uh, yeah, facts don't change. As well, it was acceptable then. Fine, but he was still a pedophile. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, facts don't change. Uh, yeah. Over okay. time, the fact that it was okay then doesn't change the fact that now we know better, and either we're wrong and Muhammad was right, or Muhammad was wrong and we're right to finally have an issue with fucking nine-year-old girls. Hmm. It is that simple. If it is the if Muhammad was in if Muhammad was inspired, he's going to talk about this nine-year-old girl in a minute. If Muhammad was inspired by a, an all-knowing God, then one of two things is true. Either that almighty God was wrong to allow him to have sex with a nine-year-old girl and not step in and stop it. Or we're wrong for saying that you shouldn't be allowed to have sex with a nine-year-old girl. We'll leave it to the audience to decide which one it is. Yep. And if we're wrong about being... Uh, yeah, then, then we're okay with being wrong. In the f <laughs> we, We'll accept that if uh, the, supposedly that's the truth that Muhammad was seeking back then. Yeah. We, we're fine with being wrong with that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is the, 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 this is the corner that pretty much Muslims are stuck with. Their founder not only killed people in mass, but uh, also fucked a nine-year-old girl. So here we go. I, I swear, man. People make me crazy. They make me absolutely crazy. Oh man. I think you make yourself crazy. Well, for, for denying something as simple as he was a mass murderer and a pedophile. Well, let's give him a chance, but What's up, guys? He doesn't it's deny it. Well, and this is mm -hmm. Are We Cuckoo Now? Today we're going to do something I will say I have seen this before and he he does not back up the, he doesn't try to deny that he was a pedophile or that, that Muhammad was a pedophile. No, in fact, he yeah. makes excuses which is always what you're stuck with when your religious founder did something, you know, disgraceful. Yeah, he, he, he totally uh, yes. avoids the pedophile issue altogether. Oh, no, no, I thought you addressed it. Uh, let's play it. Let's see what yeah. he does. Pretty sure I remember just watching the whole way through, and I don't think that ever came up on his part. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's continue. A little different. I found this wonderful video online, so I thought it would be great if I could make a response to it in the most polite and informative way possible. So let's begin. Muslims have to believe in Muhammad, their prophet, and follow him as their ultimate role model, it doesn't mean I'm a racist. Because Islam is not a race. If you believe- oh, I'm gonna Correct. put you there. You forgot about the other types of Muslims. You must have forgot about Wahhabis, Ahmadiyyas, and Shias, too. They don't necessarily believe in that. Actually, they do. <laughs> um, there is no, um, there is no Wahhabi, Shiite, Sufi version of Islam that does not teach that he did have sex with a nine-year-old girl, Aisha, um, and, uh, and his favorite wife amongst uh, how many wives did he have? Uh, b collectively or all at the same time? I guess collectively throughout Four. throughout his oh his collectively career, I think it was seven throughout his lifespan might have been seven. six okay. Um, but the thing about it is, is that, um, yeah, it, it's, he, yeah, I mean, there's nothing about what she said that's not accurate. I don't think this girl is the smartest girl in the world, but she is telling the truth about this, you know, so let's see what else he has to say. Okay, so, yeah. Don't oh. generalize all Muslims. At well, yeah, you can generalize all Muslims when all Muslims do, in fact, teach that Muhammad killed people uh, for not um, a, for being pagan, uh, and he and he did have sex with a nine-year-old girl. There is not. The, the, I believe the Sufis might be. Um, I believe the Sufis don't teach that he literally killed people, and that they believe it's a metaphor. I think, but the Sufis are a minority. Is it like like if you take all of Christianity, the Sufis are like the Amish? All right, so oh, okay, it, yeah. yeah um, I'm not well versed uh, in the, the whole Muslim background like a uh, like you are. You 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 seem pretty uh, well uh, educated on the matter. There's one version of Islam that essentially is believe takes the Quran as a metaphor, and Sufis. Uh, if you ever heard of the band Ba House, for all you old Goths out there. 
Uh, the lead singer, Peter Murphy, became a Muslim, and he's a Sufi. And a meth head, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not to say that all Muslims are meth heads. No, but, but just Peter Murphy, <laughs> because he's so cool it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so unless if, you, if you want to take this tiny, 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 tiny fraction of Islam out of the equation, in, in, in out of the equation, then all Muslims do believe in those two things. So here we go. As just one type, I don't understand the racist part though. But if you're gonna generalize Muslims, people call you racist because the whole idea behind a racist is someone who bases someone off of what they stereotypically think. No. No, it's no. Th race, it's beyond the race. Like, th are you really that it's fucking dense, dude? It's nothing to do with dude? what you think. Uh, a it's racist. It's about race. The, yeah. the race is in the word racist. I, I would love to get a Ku Klux Klan member in here in our little studio right now and say, by the way, um, black people, um, now, d now, does it make a difference according to what they think? <laughs> All right. right. So I'm gonna get Louis Farrakhan in the room, and I'm gonna get, uh, and I'm gonna get that guy that was on Mad TV, uh, and and I want to know, and then we're gonna get uh, Arsenio Hall in here, and then we're gonna get uh, the guy that, the, and we're gonna get like uh, the the guy from Two Life Crew that got his dick sucked on stage, <laughs> and I want to know, is it really all about what they think? And he's gonna say, no, they're all niggers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, it's all about the level of melanin in the skin. Yeah, he's going to find a way to discriminate solely based on that. And he'll admit that. He's, <laughs> he's not going to find a way. He's already found a way. He, <laughs> you, you, sorry, you got if you got one drop, drop of black blood, no, nope, you know. And uh, that's what a racist does. Um, no, racism is not, not, not in any way based on what you think. So already, the very premise of your argument is shit yeah fucking terrible dude like really <laughs> these guys got a lot this of simple shit like, yeah <laughs> so here we go not what is true i hate when people say ah islam is not a race style okay so get your facts straight but nobody has experienced what muslims right. are experiencing today you can't that, that doesn't can't, make it a race you can't handle that fact is that what you can't handle well he's saying that muslims because are, it goes against your narrative yeah well he's saying that muslims are discriminated and therefore but that does not matter that is not racism even if people were hunting down and killing Muslims, which I don't encourage, by the way, all right? But even if people were, it would not be, it would be an act of phylicide, certainly. Um, but it's not racism. It's, you can call it bigoted. You can call it bigoted. Yeah. You can call it bigoted. Uh, Islam is, an, quite simply, it's an ideology. And the only reason he's pushing race is because racism has a lot more fire behind it than bigoted. Yeah. And he wants Muslims to be able to yell racism when when people criticize them, because uh, that shuts that that is more likely to shut down the conversation than just calling the person a bigot. Right. They want to be able to use the racist card, like people of of, of ethnic groups that might be discriminated, and that's the, the, the I'm sorry the buck stops here. It is time to start calling people out who use racism in a context that is not racism. And also, I would like to point out that if you look up, uh, uh, the last time I looked up the, the pretty much the dictionary definition of bigot, it really comes down to the intolerance of another belief, which that's almost inherent in each and every one of us. Oh, you mean uh, the definition of bigot wouldn't actually fall under racism? Like, that's a separate thing? Oh, no. No, bigot, it, <laughs> it's totally separate. Yeah, just, it, it, it's a total different belief. Yeah, just different belief. Like, for example, like... Like, really, all of us, we are all inherently bigoted, with the exception of saying if you are a Buddhist monk or the Pope. So, like, if, for example, uh, I think almost you universally, almost all of us could agree that, you know, pedophilia is very just disgusting. Like, we wouldn't want to be friends with anybody who's a ped pedophilia. Well, we're getting, but, Jared, but, we're getting Jared from Subway on, on our podcast next week. Absolutely. And we're going to see if he agrees. We, we can't wait to have him on, but... We're not really no. getting Jared on. <laughs> No, but by, but so if if I ask you guys, do you could you ever be a friend with someone who has said that they have had sex with a child and then you say no, then by definition you are a bigot. Interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, and which there's nothing wrong. By with it. definition. Yeah, by yeah. definition, and there's nothing wrong with it. Like you can be bigoted in certain ways and other ways. Like I don't know. It's 
Yeah, it, I think, it, yeah. I think about John it, Waters. It's all subjective, like yeah. whether you think it's right or wrong to be sub, uh, just bigoted towards certain things. Yeah, I think about the yeah. film director John Waters saying how much he hates sports. He says, I was a sports bigot since the day I was born. So with the way you're describing bigoted, that falls under that uh, definition. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wouldn't, yeah. So, okay. Um, so so dude, in some circumstances, it is okay to be bigoted. Yeah. But of course, he's not saying bigoted. He's pushing racism here. Yeah. And I, you got to call bullshit on this stuff. No matter no matter how stupid the argument is, you can't just expect it to die on its own. You got to call it out. This is not racism. This is not racism, and, the, and it is necessary because racism is too powerful of an accusation to let someone pin it on someone who is not a racist. So here we go. Kind of fits with what racism is all about. Basically. No. We already said why. We <laughs> disliking someone because of That's the color right. of their skin, culture, or whatever it is. In this case, religion. Yes. No. Uh, God, dude, how fucking dense can you be in this video? We're only a minute and 45 seconds in. Yeah, this is going to take forever. God. The color of your skin. You can't help but pause, dude, but you're yeah. making it too fucking easy for us. If your religion teaches you that, uh, you know, that uh, it's okay to do things that I might consider uncomfortable, like fuck nine-year-old girls. Now, I know I'm not saying most Muslims take that to heart, but they do in... Islamic countries, okay? Um, there have been protests in Islamic countries where they've talked about making the age of consent 13 from 9. And uh, hey, in some way, I guess that's sort of progressive, but uh, it's still a long way to go. <laughs> when the bar's set that low. Um, the bottom line is, no, this is not racism. And no, it is not the same thing. And it is a world of difference. Now, uh, you want to talk about discrimination against Muslims? Um that's a whole nother argument, but I gotta stop you as soon as you use the word racism. You use, you use the word against discrimination. You use yes, a Muslim can be oppressed for being a Muslim. I buy that, but it's not racism. Shut up. Stop it. You don't get to use that card that is specifically only allowed to be used against people who are discriminated because of their race. Period. <laughs> it doesn't work yeah. for anyone else, and you don't get to use it unless you are being discriminated for the color of your skin. That's uh, it. Yes. Yes, religion is not a race, but you seem to forget that people like to generalize all Muslims as terrorists. Don't act all That still has nothing Strong to do man. with racism. Uh, yeah. Strong man. Well, what person has said all Muslims are terrorists? Like, I would like to, I would like, will. I would like to meet with this person just so that I could say, hey, I met a person who believes, legitimately believes, all Muslims are terrorists. I actually have met a couple, like shortly after 9/11. Uh, when people, when a lot of stupid people were becoming reactionaries and it existed. However, this was never the majority of the population. It was never even a likely, if you, if you set out and met a hundred people in any given day, it was not likely you would meet many. I think I can remember three instances in the whole, in, in about the, the, the two year span after 9-11 from 2011 to 2000 and, I'm sorry, to 2001 to 2003 before I maybe met three people who stupid enough to say all Muslims are terrorists. No, most people don't believe that. Most people have never believed that. Um, and uh, this is, as you said, this is a straw man. All vilified when someone makes a mistake and calls you a racist for hating them because of their religion. Okay, let me give you a little lesson. The reason why people say racist is because it actually fits in with what's going on. We already said that it doesn't. <laughs> based on racist things that happen to people. For example, nope, it's religion. It's not race. Uh, yeah. Therefore, it is Again. not racism. Again, I ideology. Yep, yeah. here we go. Example. If you see someone with a beard and a turban walking up to you, I know your ignorant and uneducated self is probably going to be like, wow, that dude is a terrorist and he's going to try to blow me up. No. Nope. Really? You, you can read my mind, huh? Oh, yeah. wow, that's a uh, wow. Whatever, okay, you have to be living in a bubble to think that the majority or even a small fraction of the society sees a guy in a beard and turban and think that guy's going to blow me up. I, uh, I, live in a, I live in a city where you see people walking around in turbans all the time and beards. And most people, no matter how all-American apple pie burgers and fries Americans they are, they just walk right on by them like it's nothing. And they don't even bat an eye. I've never seen anybody run away from a man in Islamic garb. Bullshit. And, I, and I'm, gonna, and I'm <laughs> yep. betting that most of you at home have never seen it either. And if you saw it one time, it was an isolated incident. It is not a frequent occurrence. So I better get ready. What did you just do? You based it off his look. A stereotypical thing. And that's what racists do. So it's kind of the same thing. No. <laughs> OK, 
okay, you're not a racist, but you're a bigot. Let's move on to Okay, fine. Yeah, and okay, stop... we'll go with that. We'll go with bigot. So, stop using the word racist. So, two minutes of ranting about how it's racism, and then you end with the note, okay, it's not racism, you're a bigot. Fine. Why don't you just stop pushing the idea of race yeah, why do you and just, just say bigot? Because yeah. bigot works. You're, you, you, if you're talking about a person who actually is bigoted towards someone who's in Muslim garb. Now, I have certain bigoted ideas about Muslims myself. I see a Muslim with, in Muslim garb with a beard and a turban, and I think he probably isn't going to sit down with me and have a ham sandwich and drink some bourbon. <laughs> uh, I'm bigoted like that. I, I expect <laughs> that he's not going to do that. I expect that he's going to, you know, that if I got this freaky gay look in my eye, that I'm just kind of getting that kind of mood, you know, I want to be experimental, and I want to say, oh, you look really, I bet you have really hairy under there like an Arab. Um, <laughs> you want to go have gay sex? I'm going to think, he probably has a lot of issues with that kind of thing. So if I want to go into a bathhouse with him and get, like, really Turkish with him, you know, so I'm going to, like, give him that look. I'm going to think he's not going to be down because he's going to have a lot of religious issues with that kind of thing. I'm going to say we could have a drink. We can have, like, Cosmopolitans. And 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 then, and then we can wear rainbow speedos, and you can like pull your big Arab penis into a big rainbow <laughs> speedo and a thong, and we can walk down the beach holding hands together. I think he's not going to do that because he's got serious well, issues with that kind of thing. I mean, oh, Prophet, you're getting really descriptive here. Is, is there uh, something you want to come out and say? No, it's oh. hypothetical, dude. Oh, oh, no, no, oh, hypothetical. Okay, okay, sorry. Did you see that like Bears game yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not great, talking great about. Game. I don't mean bears like. Oh fuck this! Let's get back on with the video. You know, like twink, the twinks, twinks versus bears. Oh sorry. <laughs> a rapist, a pedophile, a mass murderer, not to mention a warmonger, liar, cheater, thief, adulterer. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll be the yeah. first to admit her list was a little long. Uh, Muhammad defined adultery however the fuck he wanted to. So. Um, so, okay, in Muhammad's world, and he did this, where if the husband was still alive, but you captured his wife in battle and took her for yourself, uh, that wasn't adultery. wasn't rape but you be the judge <laughs> i love how she's talking about muhammad peace be upon him like she has thank you peace be upon you yep appreciate like, wherever it she got it from that's right. the truth buddy she read it all he's a rapist and a monger and he's mass murdered people and this and that and this and that and you guys don't know it but i know it where did you get that information i would like to read that's it oh hmm. if you're a muslim and you don't wonder. know hmm yeah um where could you find this information from I, uh God, yeah i don't know uh the specific uh mandate that said you could have sex with a married woman if uh you captured her in war is and he and even he admits that that he in another video he admits that this is in the quran so uh he's basically either for you be very you know, over time, obviously, these women probably developed a Stockholm Syndrome, which is basically they fell in love with their captors. So, for example, so you have this captor who's now attracted to this woman, and she's attracted to him. But the issue is, she still has a husband. So they asked, what are we going to do? Like, they felt uncomfortable. They, they, they wanted to pursue relations, but they couldn't because the women were married. So then there was a revelation that came, which gave them permission to marry these women, even though their husbands are out and about, because you never know, they might die, and, and, and they, they want to be together and consummate. And, whatever they want to do and have kids whatever he admits that that he in another video he admits that this is in the quran so uh he's basically either for you be very forgetful or he's lying now of course in his religion muhammad redefines adultery so it doesn't count because he was the it is he he's fucking the wife of a pagan idol worshiper whom he stole her from which is perfectly legal in Islam. And he has a whole video where he makes excuses for that, too. Uh, bottom line, uh, she's you can nitpick with some of the things this girl's saying, but most of what she's saying is true. Uh, in Muhammad's case, because he's Muhammad, he gets to redefine adultery. 
So it's sort of like the Texas sharpshooter argument. You know, if you get the move, it's sort of like, yeah, it's sort of like the whole, you know, only only white people can be racist thing. If you get to redefine the definition to suit you, I'm the prophet, it's not adultery when I say it's okay, well, then words don't have any fucking meaning. Mm -hmm. was one of the kindest men on the planet. People aspire to be wow. like him. He was the one that taught us. But one did, of the kindest men on the planet. But, but did he really? Kill, but was he? But did he kill people? Did, did he kill people for their religion? Did he kill people for worshiping idols? Yeah. Or, or, or was he killing people in self-defense? What, what did he do for moral reasons? No. In yeah. the, at least judging by the hadith, no. He killed people. It was a death sentence to be an idolater. Uh, and that's in the Hadith. I'm not, I don't know citations, but you guys can Google it. It's that easy. Or Bing it. I don't care. Yeah, and his biggest war was against, of course, the Jews, because they were the ultimate... Uh, Actually, no. Uh, the worst... I thought it was. No. Okay. He had a massive war with the Jews. But um, he was actually very pro-Jew in the beginning. But even in his worst time, there were some situations where... He said, okay, you get to still be Jewish. I won't force you to convert, but you have to pay us a, 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 a gemna, I think it's called. Um, I am drunk. I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that. But it's basically a tax for being a Jew, um, for not being a Muslim, basically. But if you were a pagan, if you were, if you were a polytheist, you, all, all bets were off. You, you, you were fair game, and he demonstrated that. So, um, you guys, you know, we, we, I'm not going to lie. We don't take time to research this stuff. You guys can do it. Do it for fun. Just type Muhammad, uh, prophet, and pagans and see what he did. It's all in the Hadith. He killed people for worshiping multiple gods. If you were a monotheist, he tolerated you. If you paid. You guys, you know, we I'm not going to lie. We don't take time to research this stuff. You guys can do it. Do it for fun. Just type Muhammad, uh, prophet, and pagans and see what he did. It's all in the Hadith. He killed people for worshiping multiple gods. If you were a monotheist, he tolerated you if you paid him uh, a ransom, basically, to, to live. Like a, like a, like a fucking like, um, 1930s gangster. Well, yeah, yeah, I want to give you protection money. See, that's essentially what Muhammad did. If you were a monotheist, that didn't belong to his religion. So here we go. Not to hate our enemy. He was the one that taught us not to raise our hand on someone as if we are going to hit them. Citation needed. Because that alone is just as bad as hitting someone. He was the one that told us not to cut down a tree because there is one more leaf on it, so it deserves life. So cutting down trees is illegal in Islam. Yeah, I'm leaving that alone. <laughs> he was the one that said that if we killed one man, it's like killing all of humanity. Citation. And he was the one that said that if we save one man, it's like saving all of humanity. Actually, that's wait, wait. from the Talmud. I was going to say, wasn't that, wasn't that uh, the one that liberals always like to use about how, yeah, like that's the beginning, but they forget to... Like, that's the first half, yeah. but they for conveniently forget I, to mention the second half. I will probably post a citation on this when I'm done, but yeah. he there's, 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 there's something that seems really benevolent until you keep reading, and apparently it goes on to, yeah, reference uh, killing... I don't remember the exact... I, I will post... I'll look it up. I've looked it up before, and yes, he's misquoting the Quran. He took in hundreds of sex slaves... What? Where did you get that? Yeah, she really should have a citation for that. I know that he did take sex slaves. Uh, how many? I don't know. Where did you get that? I would love to know. Hadith. Hadith. <laughs> Please tell me. Where the did hadith. you get that? The hadith. information is out there. It's spilled plenty of blood all around the world. There have been wars fought for the countries we live in. Yes, but they're not always uh, wars where you're killing people for their religion. People spilled blood so we could have our freedom in this country. Yes, and people have spilled blood because you didn't like the gods they pray to. So don't act like blood has never been spilled for... No, nobody's saying that. They're just not everybody spills blood because they don't like the prayers you're doing. Something good. Our own American flag is represented by blood. Have you forgotten? No, it's not. It's random. 
Uh, the uh, red, white, and blue actually doesn't stand for anything in particular. It was a random color they chose because they like the way it looked. Does not stand for blood. John, the red, white, and blue? What does the red stand for? Does not stand if for blood. If you have forgotten, the red stands for the blood spilled no, by doesn't. the men who fought for this country. Nope. No. Don't. It actually, it literally doesn't no. stand for anything. He's a <laughs> self-betterment crap. I want to be real quick, even if it did, so what? Uh, spilling blood because you're defending your homeland that you're on, and spilling blood because you're inva invading somebody else's, which is what Muhammad did, very different things. Now, let's be honest, America did invade other people's countries, um, and if you want to make an issue out of that, fine, but America did not kill people because they disagreed with the gods that they worship. Muhammad did. Yeah. Oh, wait, and, and because he was uh, like so adamant about it, he's like, of course it's because of the blood on the, on the flag, duh, like... Do you think he did that? Did that? Like, do you think he knows that he's full of bullshit? But he's hoping that people will catch on because, like, oh, well, I think he seems so passionate about it. He must be right. I think he heard that and he never looked it up. Probably. I think. Uh, I think he believes it. But you know, who cares? Even if it did, spilling blood or having your own your own blood spilled for one reason or another. It's not one of those absolute things. I'm talking about murdering people because you're trying to wipe out their religious ideals so you can take over, which is what Mo did. Hmm. See, I said I wasn't going to get angry. You deserve anything that comes to you. Wow, that's pretty harsh. Honestly, I wish uh, you the best be in the best of health for yeah, you and your family. That, that could be because you deserve that. it. You're a human yeah, being. He's a young man. He's Because uh, she's not talking to him directly. Mm -hmm. She's talking to yeah. all Muslims. And you know, if she really is a former Muslim and she's really young and kind of stupid, frankly, uh, yeah, I get it. Um, but she's a little too passionate. But no, I don't think every Muslim deserves anything they have coming unless they do something. So, there. Yeah. Who has feeling, so you deserve happiness. But you just said... You deserve whatever is coming to you in an angry way. So how does that make you different from ISIS and the terrorists? Well, the difference because is she's talking and they're doing it. That would be a yeah. big leap. That, that, that's, that's a big leap, for sure. That would be basically the difference. Um, she's uh, using harsh words that uh, she may or may not mean. ISIS is actually delivering it. So there you go. They're pretty angry, and they wish the worst upon us. You're supposed to refer to... Syria. It's actually Sura, by the way. That's how they say it. Yeah. In Syria, in Iraq, by ISIS or ISIL. This is what's happening. They're not bad Muslims. They're perfect Muslims. I have never seen more devout Muslims in my life. And I grew up as one. Wait, hold up. In the Middle East. <sighs> you know, I think she might be telling the truth. She does look Kuwaiti. I say that because I've known Kuwaitis and she has a certain look. She looks like she's definitely of that region, you know. Yeah, by the face, she looked like she, yeah, certainly could have been from the Middle East. I, I can see it. This is something about. I think she's overplaying it. Like maybe her parents left as a, when she was younger, but I don't know, I'm speculating. This is something about, yeah, you know, I don't know. I think judging by the, she does look Middle Eastern. So, yeah. you know, I'm not going to doubt her. I'm not going to question her too much. A little bit I am because there's something about, I think, I, there's something very exaggerated -y about the way she talks. But I don't know her, so I don't know. What the fuck? I, girl, are you... This okay, fucking Fruit Loop. What oh, the hell no. Go <laughs> Are you telling the truth right now? Cause I don't. If it was really such a violent religion, I really think that's entertaining. How do you find yeah. right now? And, and 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 how did you find yourself to be? Simple. Uh, whenever you're living amongst people who belong to a violent religion, and ultimately they're not innately violent people, um, it'd be like saying, uh, you know, um, it, if you were involved in such a puritanical religion as the Catholic Church, how is it that a priest fucked you in the ass when you were ten? Mm -hmm. Um, well, because most people don't believe in, most people at the end of the day do whatever the fuck they want to. That would be why. Um, so this stupid argument that if Islam is so religious, if, if, sorry, if Islam is so, um, is, not, is so violent, wouldn't we be, the world would be much more dangerous with 1.6 billion people being Muslim? No. Because the fact of the matter is, is uh, nobody really wants to live in a war zone. Nobody really wants to go out and attack people, um, the next door neighbors that they know, because they belong to the wrong religion. And it takes a little nudge, more more nudge than just having certain words in a book. 
That's why. Uh, most people ignore their religion at the end of the day. That's why. The, that's why you have that. Because I'm a and I'm a Muslim video where the guy says I'm married to a man and I and I drink. Well, Islam forbids both of those things. So congratulations. You can f think for your fucking self to a certain point. Yeah. Um, yeah which uh, that, that type of uh, you know Islam I, I approve of, where you know you cherry pick it much like uh, the Christians cherry pick. Perry, yeah. Cherry pick, cherry pick uh, the parts of the Bible that they want to and want to not follow. Yeah, I argued yeah. it this way. I argued this way. Every time I make this argument with an SJW over, like, uh, social media, and they say the stupid argument, you know, if, there's a, if Islam's so violent, uh, the, wouldn't the world be doomed with 1.6 million? I'm like, okay, if uh, Mormonism is so puritanical, why is Salt Lake City the biggest uh, purchaser of pornography? <laughs> um, you know, That's a good point. Yeah, uh, because at the end of the day, unless you can rally people together under your religion, unless a Muslim is pious and in some kind of a Muslim herd, uh, there's not too much to worry about. As soon as they start to rally together is when you have to worry. Here, right. in, in this country, in this beautiful country, you're making Islam seem so violent and, and aggressive. Because Muhammad killed people, more people than any single religious founder in history. And uh, please, if you know somebody who killed more people than Muhammad... Uh, citation. Citation. Uh, please, please, mention that person. Someone, uh, I, want, I want anyone who I might see this, please, post us the name of the founder of any other religion on earth who killed more people than Muhammad did. He has to be a founder of a religion, and he has to have killed more people than Muhammad. Aggressive and angry. Now, I feel like this is coming from a bad area, not really an educational area. Of course, if you look at anything and concentrate on the bad, you could make it look bad. Growing up... Neither one of them are coming from an educated area. They're taking what little... They're, not, they're both laymen, and they're coming up with what they know, and they're talking about it. The fact, it's the pot calling the pale black. None of my aunts had hijab wearing, wore hijab. None of them prayed five times a day. My dad, if you look at him, he wears shorts. He's got necklaces. He's very westernized. They were Muslim, and they did what they wanted to do, and that's why that's why uh, America does not have every Muslim coming up and killing people. That's why, because they don't give a fuck. They do whatever they want to do, mm -hmm. and they don't want to fight. That's why. Unless they can be guilt tripped into fighting. So your dad wore shorts and necklaces. Awesome. Y your aunts, no. they never wore hijab. Awesome. So basically, what you're saying is contradicting what you're trying to prove. That you guys were Muslim, yet you lived an amazing free life. Like, there was nothing wrong. They were all fine. What exactly are you trying to say? You're just a loose Muslim. I'm trying to figure it out. Wait. Because they weren't pious, and you don't have to worry about Muslims that are that are that are not pious. Yeah, it's like he's trying to make the argument that they weren't really Muslim. No, no, he's saying that, and he's trying to make the argument that because they did all these things, um, then what's your complaint about Islam if your family was so lax? And the point that she's making is she knows what it teaches, and her parents ignored Islam's violent teachings because they had a different direction there what life they wanted their life to take regardless of what their religion teaches because you got to get people when they're young stupid and you got to get them in those little tight-knit groups to try to brainwash them into being radicalized and violent yeah and they were too smart for it and decide to evolve themselves into better better people than what the Quran taught you how to be you know word for word in exactly. the Quran yeah. exactly no, no 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 it's not making any more sense you're saying that Muslims are strict and violent. I don't know where that's coming from, really. Except the media, I will understand. But where's Saudi it coming Arabia, from your family? Jordan? Because it seems like your family was pretty Iran. chill as Muslims, and they were lenient. <laughs> Yet, if they were lenient, then how do you know so much about Islam? Because I would imagine that you didn't really learn about it a lot because your family was very lenient about it, and you probably didn't learn so much about it, and you probably weren't forced to be a Muslim. You've already proved to yourself that you don't know a lot about Islam when she said, it's like, oh, he was a murderer and a rapist. It's like, what? It's like, where did you get this from? Like, come on, dude. You're not fooling anybody. It's the Hadith. It's all in the Hadith. God. I'll probably pull citations when I get some time. <laughs> I don't know. Just the
Yeah. I'll probably post citations when I get some time. <laughs> I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, if she were in the middle, if she were in the Middle East, did she say she was actually in the Middle East? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, if she were in Saudi Arabia, she would, her family would have been murdered. If uh, she were in Iran, her family would have at the very least been sent to prison. Um, so it depends on what country that they were in. But she does not sound like she's from a Middle Eastern country. She doesn't have an accent. I'm saying she lives in America, and that's why her family never got any grief. Right. And also this guy, he's uh, about to give a shit just because she has a cross on her on her wrist. Which, oh, you've seen this. Uh, well, you, you've sent me it, and then I, I viewed it once. And okay. He's going to say, oh, she was never a Muslim. I, I think he tries to make that argument, which, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm, pretty, she got the, I'm pretty sure he does, uh, he does make the argument. But anyways. That's the reason she got the uh, tattoo after she apostatized. Yeah, yeah, she realized, uh, you know, the barbaric religion that, uh, that... Yeah, Islam was, and then simply, yeah, shifted over to Christianity, which... Don't get us it, started. Yeah, which isn't exactly <laughs> any... It's slightly better, but not very much. But it's, it's, it, it's only better only because there was a New Testament. The, the, the yeah, the Old Testament to New Testament, yeah, there was a Christianity 2.0, which in, yeah. the Islam 2.0 has not happened yet. But there are people within the group that are trying to create it right. amongst... Um, who, who's the one Majid guy? Majid Nawaz. Majid yeah. Nawaz. Majid Nawaz. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a he's a great guy. He's a very very good Muslim. I would say follow him. Listen Intellectually, him. Christianity is uh, no uh, better than really than than Islam. Intellectually, the logic is just as bad. Yeah. Uh, the outcome is not as bad. People say, "Oh, the Crusades, the Crusades, the Crusades." Um, without getting into the fact that the Crusades was a counter attack, uh, getting past that. The Crusades was the Pope having to take um, uh, to push an illiterate population into doing something that was blatantly against the Bible because they couldn't read it for themselves so they could tell them whatever they wanted. Um, there's no New Testament writings to justify pillage and murder and rape, but there's plenty in the Quran and the Hadith. Yeah. So we're... Yeah, we're Really, the only hope for uh, Islam is a uh, reformation, which uh, Majid Nawaz is trying to push. So, more, I, I wish the best of luck to him. I hope he gains thousands. He's one of and many. Turns, he's and, the turns most out, known. Yeah, he, he's probably the most uh, well known so yeah. far. So he's got thousands of followers. Hope, hopefully, that turns into hundreds of thousands. Hopefully, it turns into millions. And Godspeed, you know. Well, even though I don't believe in God, but whatever. Godspeed. Metaphorically and his, speaking. Yes, metaphorically. Yes. I wish you the best, Majid. Yep. Carry on. Is that a tattoo of a cross? Hmm. It's time to think. Oh yes, God. that's right. Think. If I put one and one together, Which you don't I'm going to come up with do. some theories. And these theories are no way, shape, or form true, but they are theories. One, you were never, ever a Muslim. <laughs> Two, you probably... Of course. Got the, the cross. Other. After leaving Islam, we already said that. We're in the Middle East, but you pretend to be a Muslim. Trying to make us look bad. Mm. Oh, wow. Well. Shame, shame, shame. That's Three, stretch. you're probably a convert, really? which is fair. So and please, please prove it. Please prove that she was never Muslim, and it, and this is just all an act on her. Please, please prove that. Please, yeah. I, I would like to see this. She was not pious, but she was Muslim. Four. Wait, I, I don't have a four. So it's just three theories right now. Just three. But there's still theories. Whatever we take, we can That's make or break. So some people take Islam and believe it in a certain way and ruin it for others. I I'm going to say you're probably a Christian, and I know Christians are not like this, and they're more understanding. And let me tell you that I've met some wonderful, kind Christian people in my life, and I love them to death. Now, if you're a Christian, you're making them look bad, and you're making them all look like they... How about the fact that if they're Christian, you get to tax them for being Christian? <laughs> because that's actually not only in the Hadith, that's in the Quran. All right. Uh, by being Christian, they uh, you are allowed to extort them for money for being Christian. It's funny how the, the Muslims accuse Jews of being like stingy with money. 
and uh, for, for being shifty with money, but they have a shifty with money law in their very holy book towards Jews and Christians, but mm -hmm. anyway. They are ignorant, stubborn-headed people, but it's not fair to base them all off of you. Just like it's not fair for you to base all Muslims on some teachings that I don't know where you got She them. didn't. She's talking about... Well, I don't about... know where you got them from. Uh, it could have been the Quran. Yeah. No, not She at actually all. did not stereotype all Muslims. Uh, she uh, is talking about Muslim teaching. And granted, she didn't yeah. give any citations. Uh, but do, if I don't post... If I don't decide to actually, like, post them here... Look them the fuck up because it's getting to be very frustrating having to repeat the same passages to uh, to, to Islam apologists all the time, as if they to the same people and they never actually look them up and read them for themselves. But yeah, all just about everything she said it can be verified by Muslim holy text, if not the Quran, the Hadith. Got them from from your lenient family that probably never really practiced if they were Muslim. I see what you do. For the, for the person that said, Hello. saying that all Muslims are terrorists is like saying all Italians are in the mafia. You're a dimwit. You're a dimwit. You're a dimwit. You're a dimwit. Come on, man. Do I really have to continue with this video, man? Really? That's what we've been saying, but you're a dimwit. Go on. So you're saying that just because Islam is not a race, it's okay to pick at it and call them all terrorists? She didn't, did she? No. No. She, she never called all Muslims terrorists. So, uh, oh, is straw that man, straw okay. man from the Wizard of Oz coming down and dancing down the yellow brick road yet, so here we go. What? And to everybody else who's talking about Islam getting taught in schools, I have to say this. I have no problem with Islam getting taught in schools. Make sure you actually teach about Islam. I don't want to hear anybody sugarcoating it. I don't want to hear anybody taking out parts that are inconvenient. Let's teach kids about what really happens in history. Yeah. That will work out great. Let's do that for Thanksgiving okay. too. Remember th well, I, I would say just, yeah, if you were to teach Islam, uh, make sure it's in like a separate like class, like say seminary, like have a seminary like styled uh, Islam Compared class. Comparative religion. Yeah, you know. like, like as a what do you call the, not a, one of those mandatory, but the the side classes like say you know woodshop or whatever. What do you call those? Uh, electives. Electives, yeah. So, yeah, I would be okay with that. Like as long as that was an elective class, then sure. Depending on the grade, you know. But he brings up Thanksgiving, and I think this is a very good point that he makes right here, and I'm going to elaborate on this, too. Yeah. Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah, Christopher Columbus, one of the most revered men. We shouldn't take out all this stuff for kids. We should teach them the reality of... Yeah, and they do now. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Like the mass murdering, rape, and pillaging of all the Indians. Yeah, they do now. Taking a land which was not theirs, bringing disease from Europe here to America. Yeah, they teach all that in school now. Yeah. A country which was beautiful and clean. Also, let's teach them about Valentine's Day yeah. and how bloody that was, too. Is Valentine's Day really that relevant to our society? Uh, Christopher <laughs> right. Columbus, I understand. But any possible fucked up past Valentine's Day is... Is that really that deeply in does that unlike Thanksgiving and Christmas Valentine's Day it's just an, it's just a chance to castrate men for one day only um, <laughs> exactly yeah that, that's what's it evolved yeah. or devolved but if you want to however do, you want to do yeah, it exactly if you want to do away with Valentine's Day on some kind of a fucked up pass that none of us give a shit about go ahead. Yeah. yeah, but but I, I will say this is probably the only segment of the video which uh, I kind of agree with him on. Like this whole rant he goes on, I'm like oh, okay, cool. Finally, he he starts making some good points. You know, nine minutes and thirty seconds into the video. Yeah, except that we <laughs> already know this shit about Christopher Columbus and Thanksgiving. We all know that this guy was an asshat. That this guy <laughs> was a murderer. That this guy was a son of a bitch. And unlike Muhammad, who did the same shit that Christopher Columbus did, has got and, so in so much denial about. We are not in denial about it in America. We are perfectly okay saying Christopher Columbus is a son of a bitch. Most of us would be okay with getting rid of the holiday. Yeah, yeah, we we pretty much yeah grown to accept it at this point. Haven't they in most states? Yeah, yeah. And this guy, for, but although you now. 
I gotta say, I'm not exactly against the the whole like you know Columbus Day, like the, the whole Indigenous Peoples Day. And I don't know, that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. So I'm not saying you should I, go I'm, with the Indigenous people. They just get rid of the holiday, and we'll work on another one when it when it comes by its natural process. Yeah, but we don't. Yeah, we won't necessarily have to call it Columbus Day. Just uh, call it, you know, uh, founding of uh, America Day or so, something along those lines. Well, uh, yeah, I mean it's difficult because then the argument, well, you didn't discover it. And to me, it's just like just get rid of it. Don't replace it with anything. Yeah. We'll eventually find something else to replace it with on its own give due time. But the yeah. bottom line is. Yeah. None of us reveal Christopher Columbus anymore. If there's ever any statues of him anywhere, it's by inertia. We would never put them up now. They might already be there, kind of like the General Lee statue is uh, still up, I guess. I know they here they might be taking it down. Nobody would put General Lee's statue up now, but it's already there, and just it's a little bit more work to take it down. So, Wait, no, I think I heard something recently that the... They finally got that taken down. Generally, uh, l let me let me double check right here. Generally, so it generally is getting taken down. Someday, the last Christopher Columbus statue is going to be taken down. It's going to happen. No, but no, no. Okay, uh, correction. It was a uh, Robert E. Lee, the statue of Robert E. Lee. Yeah, yeah. New Orleans, yeah. Okay, from NPR. New Orleans takes down statue of General Robert E. Lee. Which, oh, okay, it's gone. Which is fucking. I'm sorry, as much as a terrible person he was, I think he probably should stay up just just as a reminder of uh, what not to... Just like a reminder, like, you know, uh, just to not... I don't know, fill in the blanks for me. I'm a little drunk. <laughs> That's for people who live in Louisiana to sort out. I don't, so I don't care. But... You know, the bottom line is... It's, it's like a, the, the the people who fail history are doomed to repeat it. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, well, the, so like use him as a reminder. If, if, if You know, if, if they had forgotten a statue of Adolf Hitler in Berlin for some reason and it was still up, someone would say, we're going to take it down. I, I don't care. I don't, I don't live in Louisiana. That's for them to sort out. But the bottom line is, Robert E. Lee, nobody looks up to Robert E. Lee anymore. There's about eight people in a trailer park in the back hoods of Deliverance where they shot that movie. All right? <laughs> There's no... Same thing as Christopher Columbus. There's no one who doesn't know at this point, and they do teach it in school. So this is a false comparison. So, yeah, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and teach that. Oh, that's right. They already do. There we go and how it came to be and, and let's teach them about Halloween the real Halloween and how that was actually you know worshipping of demons and devils yeah great I think that's awesome worship but only you guys have issues with that <laughs> the rest of us well okay if a Christian has a problem with that uh, it's not they worship of demons and devils by the way um, it is uh, you guys look that up I'm not going into a Halloween lesson right now but that is a Muslim perspective of Halloween Halloween is not the worship. It never has been the worship of demons and devils. I'm not getting into the history of Halloween now. This video is too fucking long as it is. Yeah, 49 minutes in. <laughs> but no, that's not what Halloween is. But yeah, teach him the real history of Halloween. I think it's great. And let's not stop there. Let's go to the nursery rhymes. Ring around the rosy. They're morbid. That's not the same thing as encouraging uh, violent acts. Do you remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> ashes, ashes. It's about the, uh, what was the plague? Um, it's about the, uh, the, that flu that was killing black, people. Black plague? It's not the black plague. No. It was a little later. It was the one that was like in the Victorian era. The bottom line is uh, a plague that randomly kills people is not the same thing as uh, people with scimitars cutting people's heads off. Very yeah. different. Yeah, because a uh, plague doesn't have an ideological belief behind its killing. So, yeah, go ahead and teach them about... It, it's nature yeah. at work. But if it'll make you feel better, Mr. Uh, Kareem, uh, yes, I will... Uh, if you give me, the, um, if you give me the, um, the, the paper to sign that says they're going to teach the kids the origins of Ring Around the Rosie, by all means. Just don't take too much class time over it because they got to learn math. <laughs> Fall down. Yep. Yeah, it's actually a song about people dying and getting burned to death. That's a kid's no. song. Let's tell them that too. No, Let's no, tell it's all these kids not. No, uh, no, 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 no. Ashes, ashes. Uh, had to do with something a bit about smearing ashes on them. It wasn't actually being burned to death. Um, God, I forgot what the whole point with the ashes, but it wasn't being burned to death. There was something you would do with the ashes. You would put them on your face. I forgot. But I, I might be I'm off base a little bit, but so is he. So it's it's a draw. Right. Well, we could pause this and then uh, Google it and then come back. Okay.
Yeah, look it up. Ashes to Ashes is not about being burned alive. No, but we're nitpicking. There's nothing violent about Ring Around the Rosie beyond natural occurrence. So it's not the same thing. So there we go. We're all based on violent shit. Not you so, know, let's it, do it's that. not violence. Natural occurrence is not violent. Violence is a deliberate yeah. act of food. Yeah. Because <laughs> that will work great for the kids. Don't teach about Islam without talking about Muhammad, his 11 wives, his most favorite, the 9-year-old. I don't think it was 11. It was a little less than that. But, you know, 5, 6, 11, who cares? Who's counting once you get past 5? He used to take off the playground to go and have fun between her thighs. Okay. Oh, here we go. I think I had enough. I don't it is. to be a Muslim scholar, so I want someone out there who is really well versed in Islam. He does a video where he actually admits that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl and goes on to make excuses about it. Right. Uh, yeah, I so don't... as I said before, in this video, he uh, he didn't denounce anything pedophilia related to Muhammad. That, that's the one yeah. thing he didn't deny. He, he uh, went as far as saying he's one of the most peace-loving people on earth. Yeah, his <laughs> penis went into the vagina of a nine-year-old girl and he's appealing to authority to save him from the fire on this i don't know why he didn't just cut it from the video because he dodges it to help respond to this woman i'm out because I'm he's out because he's not touching this one with a 40-foot pole <laughs> that's why he's out yeah uh, but he does later on and I might even splice it in here because we've already got a long video might as well go a full nine <laughs> no don't count us on that yeah, and we're and, and, and if you uh, donate to the Patreon that we don't have yet, um, and eventually comes our way, we won't spend it on hookers and blow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we we promise. We, wink, we, wink. We already made that joke, but we're doing it. Again. <laughs>